who is will need or seek under IHL. Geneva Conventions distinguish between different categories of wounded and sick individuals depending on whether they are combatant or civilians. Geneva Conventions 1 and 2 protect the former category, while Geneva Convention 4 protects the latter. Additional Protocol 1 applies irrespective of the status of individuals. Before analyzing separately these three regimes, I should note that while Geneva Convention 1 deals with military operations on land, Geneva Convention 2 exclusively concerned armed conflicts at sea. Owing to time and space constraints, I will not examine here Geneva Convention 2. First regime, Geneva Convention 1. According to Articles 12 and 13 of Geneva Convention 1, protection is solely afforded to wounded and sick who belong to regular or irregular armed forces or accompany them, such as war correspondents or supply contractors, members of crews, including crews of civilian aircraft, and those taking part in a levée en masse. However, this does not mean that in order to be protected, wounded and sick individuals must be in the power of the enemy and that their status be clarified. Indeed, Article 14 of Geneva Convention 1 only states that the wounded and sick of a belligerent who fall into the enemy hands shall be POWs and that the provisions of international law concerning prisoners of war shall apply to them. In other words, these provisions service as a reminder that should wounded and sick combatants fall into the hands of the adverse belligerents, Geneva Convention 3 will also govern their status and treatment. Moreover, it flows from Rule 109 of the ICRC study on customary IHL that Geneva Convention 1 applies not only to enemy nationals but also to persons under the care of their own armed forces. Lastly, I should emphasize that Geneva Convention 1 does not, as such, provide a definition of the notion of wounded and sick. As we will see, this definition can only be found in Additional Protocol 1. Second regime, Geneva Convention 4. This convention contains a limited number of provisions that protect civilians who are wounded or sick. Like Geneva Convention 1, it does not provide any definition of the concept of wounded and sick. You will, however, remember that the notion of civilians has been defined previously by exclusion to all the persons who can benefit of POW status and the protection offered by Geneva Convention 3. Article 16 of these conventions generally recognizes that the wounded and sick, as well as the infirm and expectant mothers, shall be the object of particular protection and respect. Last regime, Additional Protocol 1. In contrast to the Geneva Conventions, Article 8 of Additional Protocol 1 provides a comprehensive definition of the notion of wounded and sick in these terms. Wounded and sick mean persons, whether military or civilian, who, because of trauma, disease or other physical or mental disorder or disability, are in need of medical assistance or care and who refrain from any act of hostility. These terms also cover maternity cases, newborn babies and other persons who may be in need of immediate medical assistance or care, such as the infirm, or expectant mothers and who refrain from any act of hostility. Four observations should be made regarding this definition. Firstly, Additional Protocol 1 applies to both civilians and combatants. Secondly, it precisely identifies the causes of the wounds and sickness, referring to trauma, disease or other physical or mental disorder or disability. Thirdly, Additional Protocol 1 also adds that 
to the list of wounded and sick other persons who are in need of medical assistance, such as expectant women, newborn babies, and other vulnerable people. Lastly, according to Article 8 of Additional Protocol 1, sick or injured individuals are only entitled to protection under Additional Protocol 1 if they refrain from any acts of hostility. If these persons continue to engage in combat or to perform military duties, they will not receive the protection and correspondent obligation of care. They must be effectively hors de combat, either because they surrender or because they are incapacitated.